Hi there, this is Phil with Phil Effects, and I've got another tutorial. This tutorial is going to talk about using reference, inf re reference images when you're creating models in Maya. So let's go ahead and get started. So when you model something and you want to try and make it fairly accurate, uh, one of the best ways to do it is to use uh, reference images, and in particular if you can get reference drawings and uh, there's a number of places that you can do that uh, obviously the internet and Google is your friend and so you can get out there and you can find all kinds of pictures so today what I want to do is uh, walk you through a uh, simple exercise and we're going to uh, model up uh, over the next couple of weeks in class uh, an iPod Nano and uh, where I got all of the reference pictures and designs I want to show you. So one of the first places I go to if I'm modeling a thing is there's a website called theblueprints.com and you can see the uh, uh, URL for that right here. And they've got a number of, they've got a huge blueprint database. And why this is good in particular is they have at a minimum usually a three view drawing of an object and a three view means that you see something from the front from a side and it usually at least from the top and because you have a three view you can use those three views as reference images in uh, modeling your object so if we go to the uh, blueprints database you can see that uh, they have all kinds of different objects here and uh, they have cars and motorcycles uh, I like old World War I airplanes. Uh, if you like science fiction, there's a bunch of stuff with uh, a lot of the sci-fi, you know, the Enterprise and some of the Star Wars. You can see the X-Wing fighter right there. Uh, they've got construction equipment. But let's go over here into miscellaneous and uh, go into Apple. And we go down here and we have uh, iPod Nanos, all right? And so you, you see these different objects and you can see the little AI icon there that means there's an illustrator file here well a couple of things about this website uh, everybody's got to make money and uh, they're no different and they have a shopping cart and if you want to get pictures that are vector files from illustrator those you need to pay for and you need to create an account uh, they're actually quite reasonable and the vector files are usually the most accurate but oftentimes you don't need that and many times they have uh, just picture files and the picture files are free and if we go over here and we look at these columns what are these columns are well here's this is telling you uh, the size of the image and if it's a vector file obviously it doesn't have a size if it's a bitmap picture file then it has uh, a bitmap size so this particular iPod first generation is a picture file it's 326 pixels by 476 pixels and there's a check box in, in this column and that's under the F that means this is a front view picture uh, if it F T and R uh, so you have front top right and uh, I'm not sure what the S is <clears throat> let's look go ahead and look at one of these here and maybe we can figure what that is so let's look at an iPod fifth generation and oh two different sides okay so they have you see a front view you got a top view you got a bottom view and uh, there's a side view and a side view for a 30 gig and an 80 gig version so there's an alternate sign I'm guessing that's what they're talking about so anyway you can take this and I can just right click and I can obviously just save the image and or I can go down here and I can just download the image and I can click and download the image and I can do that for free and uh, you can even download the full size image. You can get more of a thumbnail and you can get the full size image and that's all free. If I wanted to get one of their vector files, so let's click on one of those. Here are vector files and I can add it to cart. And so it's uh, 50.5 uh, euros per credit and this costs you 13 credits. Uh, so this is uh, six and a half credits. And so you have to you know be six and a half euros right that's what this would cost you if you wanted to buy this and you would have this then in an illustrator file uh, so I've already done this for what we're gonna do and we're gonna work on an iPad Nano and I have downloaded the picture file and if we go over here this is the picture file uh, let me make that just a touch bigger and we can see uh, uh, what this looks like and uh, so here's the picture I've got the uh, front view I got a side view and I've got the uh, 
uh, uh, top and bottom. And so I see to be able to scale this, I need to unlock this. All right, unlock it. Let me move this around. Anyway, you get the gist of this, okay? So we have this. And this is the initial file I brought in. And what I did with this, we have a nice picture of the bottom, nice picture of the top. We have a side view, a back view, and a front view. And uh, it even has some scaling there. So I know the size uh, of, the, uh, of the object. So what I did is then I went in and this came in as a as a ping file i actually saved it as a psd so if i want to move it around and do more editing with it i have the original but then i went and just did selections and you can see here so i have a i created an image file that's a front and if we go through my directory let me close this i don't need this anymore uh, we can see in my directory here Okay, so here's the original file I brought in as a ping. I saved it as a PSD, and I created a back. So here's the back, and I created a bottom. Here's the bottom, and I created a front. Here's the front, and I created a left side. That's the left side, and I have a top. So I've got views of top, bottom, front, left side, and back of this. And I want to use these as referenced images in uh, doing some modeling we're going to build this uh, ipad nano so how do we do that well i've got a new project here so the very first thing we want to do is we always do in class right so we want to uh, open up our project window and right now i have it set so uh, i'm using background images files and i've got a project already set up and this is the path name and so my project is already set if you haven't, you want to create a new one, you would create new and you would do that. I don't want to do that because actually in right down here in source images, all of my images are in the source images folder. So I'm going to hit cancel. And if we go up here and if I look real quick at my directory structure, you can see here is my project file. This is my Maya project and we go down here to source images. And in the source images, I've created uh, the 3D paint textures that's created by default by, by Maya. But I created two folders in here, iPod and Nano. And these are my reference. And I have reference images that might be a little confusing. It made sense to me. So these are pictures. This is the other thing you want to do. Uh, go out and get on Google. Go to, you know, and uh, whatever your favorite search engine is, but I use Google. And I go in and I look and see what are my uh, reference, if there are some reference images for the particular object I'm trying to model. And I found quite a few nice pictures that really give me a good look at what this looks like. These are some very nice photographs. And I can see some of the different colors. All right. And I actually found one and this is going to be handy for us. So this actually gives me dimensions. So I can see that uh, whether I'm doing the fourth or the fifth generation iPod Nano, uh, it's going to be 91 millimeters tall. It's going to be 38 millimeters wide and it's going to be 6.1 millimeters thick. And because we want to model to real dimensions, knowing these dimensions is important for us. So. I've got my reference images that I'll use when I start putting materials, and I also have re reference sizes. So we've got a new project. Let's go ahead and uh, get started with that project. And the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, import these images. Now the way you want to import images and use them for a reference, uh, your cameras have the ability to put uh, a reference image in what's called an image plane on the camera. And the best way for us to do that is let's open up our outliner. And so here's my outliner. And we can see we have perspective, top, front, and side. And uh, my defaults with three orthogonal cameras, a top camera, a front camera, and a side camera, and a perspective camera. Now the top, front, and side are different from the perspective camera. The top, front, and side truly give you an orthogonal view. That means you, you will not see perspective from this top camera or from the front or from the side. You will see perspective 
uh, and this perspective camera operates like a real camera okay the top front and side do not operate like real cameras you can't actually make these this the top front and side cameras physically don't exist in real life they only exist within the inside of a program like Maya or some other CAD program say SolidWorks if you find that you need more than your uh, top front and side cameras you actually have pictures and you have pictures of a bottom and you have a back and you have a left side and a right side uh, this side right here even though it doesn't say it this is right side okay so this is the view looking from the right of an object so front is looking this way and top is looking down and side is you're looking this way towards an object all right excuse me so that's the left side I'm, I'm sorry the uh, uh, you can have a, a left side a right side a front top talking about so how do you get the other cameras well if you hit spacebar in Maya in the scene that brings up what's called the hot box and if I click on the center one with Maya all right you can see now I have left view top view back view front view bottom view right view all right so I don't have uh, I actually just created a back view, all right? Uh, my, I must have bounced when I did it, but let's go create a bottom view. So I'll create a bottom view, and now I created a bottom view. Hit this, and let's create, I have a top view, I have a front view, I now have a back view, a bottom view, and I have a, like I said, I thought it was right view, so let's create a left view. Yes, so this is left. So side is right view. So this is really a right view. So now I have top, front, side, back, bottom, and left. If I click on this, go back to here, and we can see this is top in Y, front looking Z, side looking X, okay? Uh, I have all of these cameras. So now what I wanna do is I wanna put an image point. Well, we have a picture of the front, all right? So if I go in and I click on the front and I have it selected and I go over here to view and I say select the camera. Uh, no, let's go into here. And I say front. I select the front camera and I go to the attribute editor. And again, if you're not seeing the attribute editor, uh, you want to click on, uh, excuse me, not that, this. This box right here will bring up the attribute editor, okay? So I have the front camera, and here's the front shape. And if we go down, we can see a tab here called environment. If I twirl on environment, I have image plane. So I can create an image plane by selecting the camera, going to its shape node and down scrolling the environment and I can click there. The other way you can do this is because I have this selected, I can go over to view down here image plane and I can say import image. If I do an import image and I haven't created an Im uh, image plane, that will do the same thing as clicking on this button here. So let's go ahead and we'll click on this button here and this creates an image plane and we can see that all right, so this is just a plane. There's nothing on it yet, and I can put a picture in there. So here is, I've selected the image. Uh, in creating it, it creates image plane shape, and here's the image. Uh, it's This right here is looking for the file. That's my picture. So I click on this folder, and notice that it defaults and goes right to the source images folder. This is one of the things I told you about in class, that why you want to keep your pictures in source images. So I go to iPod Nano, and this is the front, and I actually don't want to use the PSD. I prefer to just use a JPEG. It's a little smaller, and for what we need, that works fine. So I have my front JPEG. I open it up, and boom, I put it in there, and there's my picture. So now I have successfully imported an image, and I'm going to use it for reference on my front camera. That's a good idea to name this so we know what this is. And so let's call this front image plane. Okay, <clears throat> so we have this. So now we brought this in, and here's one of the first decisions you need to make, 
and you need to decide okay if I'm going to build my object do I want the center of my object to be the very center of X Y and Z so we can see that we have this image centered and sometimes you want to do that all right sometimes you want the center of the object to be the very center geographically and so centering this image plane is exactly where you want it because when you build this obviously you can see that uh, part of this goes below the plane part of this goes above the plane uh, in the case for the class actually I, what I want to do is let's not do that so we want to take this and let's look at our four view and here's our front view and I hit my spacebar and open that up and we want to take and raise this so I can take this hit the W key and I can just pick this up all right and I can move it all right so I have now moved this in as close as I can place this now see this is one of the problems you're going to see with photographs photographs have perspective so you're actually seeing this rise up just a little bit right and if I take and I pan this down and I go in here we can see that this drops off just a little bit there's a little bit of a taper that's because there's perspective going on in here uh, you're just going to have to live with that a little bit if you had a true CAD drawing not a photograph the CAD drawings won't show perspective they are they truly show uh, if it's a three view drawing it's going to show your object in uh, three views and there will not be perspective on that they're a lot nicer to try and work with but you can't always get that so you make some compromises and we're going to do that so I have this right here so what's the next thing we're going to do well I said we want to make our objects full size and right now this picture looks like it's one two three four maybe four and a half grids in height well what is our grid well let's go ahead and check and see what our grid is our grid is in centimeters it's the default right so that means at the moment this picture is displaying this iPod Nano and it's four and a half centimeters high but wait a minute that's not the size that we saw what's the size that we saw well if we go to my reference pictures where was that uh, I have it here there it is iPod Nano dimensions let's open that up so we open that up and either one you can take your pick it's 91 millimeters tall 91 millimeters is 9.1 centimeters so this needs to be 9.1 units high and at the moment it's only uh, about four and a half so we need to make this taller so how do we do that all right so I'm going to scale back a little bit first off within Maya there are tools for measuring distances so I can go in here and I can go to the create menu and say create measuring tools and I can create a distance tool so I'm going to click on that and I go down here and I pop in the first locator and then I'm gonna pop the next locator now we said we want this to be 9.1 millimeters and each or 9.1 centimeters each box is a centimeter so we go one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six eight nine and I said 9.1 so let's click on that and I was pretty close that's not a bad guess all right so uh, this clicks in and you can see what it creates here in our uh, outliner it creates two locators a locator one a locator two and the distance is 9.1 now if I want to get really anal we can go in here and look at locator one and see where I placed it and I didn't exactly place it right on grid so I can go up here and if we want to be really anal I can say snap to grid and I can take this locator and I can grab it and I can snap it so he's exactly right on grid alright now he's right on grid and if I go up here and I want to move this guy I can say locator 2 and I want to snap it to grid this way but I don't want to snap it moving this way right so I'm going to turn this off so I don't go snapping it and I'm going to take and just drag him up and we can see that is boom right there that's close enough for government work so that's 9.1 
like I said, we're doing art, we're not doing CAD. So you want to get it very close, but it, it's close enough for what we need. And so now I know that this dimension right here is the dimension we want to make the size of this picture. So I go back and I select the image plane. Here's my front shape image plane. And I scroll down the tab and I go down here to height and width. Here is where I can scale it. Now the other thing is it's going to maintain picture aspect ratio. I can turn this off, but if I turn this off, I scale this in height that's going to keep the width the same. Well, we don't want to do that. We want this thing to scale proportionately. So I go in here and I click just there. I'm going to show you a trick. This is uh, one of the things in Maya. Uh, I can hold down command and I'm going to drag. So all I'm doing is I'm using the middle mouse button and I'm holding down the command key but the very first thing I did is I uh, uh, clicked inside and I'm dragging and it uh, so I'm holding down command and I'm pressing down the middle mouse button and I'm just sliding my mouse left and right and it's you can see it's scaling and changing that value so I changed it in scale I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit so I'm gonna look like I'm about midway between there Let's go back down to the scale. I click here, hold down command, middle mouse button, click and drag, and we can see that we're scaling that. So I'm gonna scale that up just a little bit more and take this and then just move it just a tiny bit. And that looks good enough for me, all right? So now we have the bottom placed on the bottom and the top is scaled correctly to 9.1 uh, Maya units and each Maya unit is a centimeter so we have 9.1 centimeters in height and so this image is now correctly scaled and correctly placed and so when we uh, model to this image everything should work out. Uh, now I don't need my dimension uh, locator anymore so I can take this I click on there and hold on shift key, select all of those, and I just hit delete and it's gone. And I go back to here, and now we have correctly made a image. We've imported an image, we're going to use it for reference. We've correctly scaled it so it's the proper size, and uh, we place it in there. One last thing you may want to do, uh, sometimes that image looks a little dark and so uh, or a little bright uh, you can go in there and you can uh, make this thing fade by going in and hitting the transparent the alpha gain so if you take the alpha gain you essentially are giving transparency to the picture and by giving transparency to the picture you're making that thing uh, shrink a little bit and so it uh, works out very well uh, if you don't want to see it the way you do it, you can't go in, select it, and do a control H. Well, I guess you can. All right. So, but if you do a control H, all right, that'll hide it. And if I go in here and do a shift H, that'll bring it back. The other way to hide it is you can go in here and uh, say none, and that'll hide it. Or you go back in and say RGBA, and you can you can show it again. Uh, so what I want you to do in class though is we're going to make a group out of these, so you're not automatically selecting. <coughs> your images when you're working on your model. Uh, but let's take this and I'm going to move this out of the way. Notice I'm just grabbing the x-axis. I don't want to shift this in y. Or excuse me, I don't want to shift this and I'm grabbing the z-axis, excuse me. So I'm pushing this back in z. The x-axis I'm not touching, I'm not touching the y because I don't want to move this. I have this precisely set in height and I have it precisely set in width. So the next, thing, next one we want to do is the uh, top one. So let's grab the top and I go down to environment and I say create. We get our image via file and I get my top picture. I open it and I place that. And if we look at this, so there is my top picture. And a uh, couple of things about the top picture. Uh, first off, uh, you should recognize is if we look at this, all right. the top picture shows the dot right there and we can see this little recess and if I look at some of my reference images uh, 
here's this top you can see that there's a recess in there right so here's this recess and there's this switch okay and the switch is the on off switch and that's what this picture is showing uh, right now the switch is on the right hand side and if we look at my reference image over here you can see that this switch is on the left side all right so what we want to do is we want to flip this so we can go in and take this image essentially by going in and we just do a uh, rotation on it so I take this and I'm gonna rotate this and here's the rotation so the rotation needs to be 180 so if I make the rotation 180 what I did is I grabbed the image plane I need to see the transform node so that's why I clicked on it so I clicked on it so I could see the transform node for the image plane and there's the transform node it's now rotated so it's properly rotated let me take this and what I need to do we can see that we have a problem in that this is obviously much smaller than this but I don't need to go getting my dimensions and rulers and everything because I actually have a reference now and the reference is this uh, other picture and so I can go in and now I can select this image plane go to the image shape go down here and click on the width and I hold down command and middle mouse button and drag and I scale this and I'm just going to scale this till it equals what my picture looks like and this is a little bit of eyeballing okay but that looks pretty close alright now you might be seeing a slight difference alright it's 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 a matter of degree but that looks like it pretty closely lines up and it pretty closely lines up but it looks like there may be a slight overlap just uh, it looks like the whole image is maybe shifted this way just a little bit. Uh, I can fix that. I can just go in and grab this and slightly move it a little bit this way. And that looks like I've got that fixed pretty good. All right. And so that works. And so now we have an image plane. Let me take this and we'll call this top underscore plane and uh, for the class we're probably not going to model the bottom and there's no reason to model the back so uh, really for class all we need is this top view and uh, the front view and so we've imported those and we've brought them in uh, if I wanted to do the bottom and the back I could do that uh, one last thing note that uh, these two when I, when I did all this, it made these visible. You really don't want your cameras visible, so I'm going to click on that and do a Control H on the top and do this and do a Control H there. Note that it didn't make these disappear, so your image planes are, are the same. Uh, the last thing you want to do is go over to your channel box, and we haven't talked about layers yet, but what I want to do is create uh, visibility layers. And there's a number of ways we can... Uh, create visibility layers they have some neat pro neat properties to them in that I can put objects in the visibility layer and then when you're clicking and dragging around uh, it'll make it so you don't automatically select these things and because these images are used for reference it's nice to make them so that uh, without some intervention they're not selectable so I'm gonna take this layer and this layer and I have selected these and you noticed maybe I was putting my mouse over here well, if I put the mouse here and we see the uh, pop-up help and it says create a new layer that's kind of going off the screen this one says create a new layer and assign the selected objects so I could just create a new layer or I could select things ahead of time and then click on this button and it'll put those objects in there so I'm going to do that so I want to select the front image and I'm going to select the top image and I'm going to click this button here and that created a layer now if I double click on here I can call this uh, ref 
images. It's normally visible. And I'm just going to hit save. Now over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this and I'm going to call this a reference. All right. So I was clicking on this. This goes from a template. A template just shows the boundary. You don't want to make it a template. Uh, is it would if there was actual geometry inside here it shows you the boundaries that's what a template does and because the geometry is simply a plane that has holds a picture it is truly showing a geometry but that's not what we want we want it to be a reference so by a reference i have that and i can go in and now you can see i can click in here and i can't select these all right also means i can't move them but uh, they're not selectable that way when I have these as a reference file and I'm using these images to uh, uh, model my object I don't automatically be clicking my uh, reference images if I want to click them and move them just take them off reference and then I can click this and we can zoom back out and I can push this back a little bit all right I can click this one and get my attribute editor Let's slide back up here and I can take that uh, alpha gain and maybe tone that down just a little bit. All right, so I can change that. All right, and now I can take, go back to my channel box, take this, make this back to a reference, and the same kind of thing. They're not selectable anymore. If I want to turn them off because I want to look at my object, I can just hit visibility. So I can click on visibility, they're there, click it off, and they're gone. So we've talked about uh, creating new cameras for new views, how to add image files onto the image plane for those cameras, how to manipulate and scale those, and scale them to proper dimensions, and then uh, the next tutorial will be actually using those and uh, using them to model our object. So this has been Phil with Phil Effects.